China's GDP and Fiscal Policy Outlook for 2023. China's economic outlook at the beginning of 2022 was cautiously optimistic. China experienced a rapid post-COVID recovery in 2021, with the annual GDP growth rate of 8.1%. But how about 2023? Will the economy get better in 2023? And what will the GDP of China be? Keep watching to understand all this and more. After three years of sluggish development caused by the impact of strict regulations to reduce COVID-19 and collapse in a property market, the government's key aim for 2023 is to get the Chinese economy back on track. On Thursday and Friday, government executives and policymakers met for the annual Central Economic Work Conference to discuss policy goals for 2023. They decided to stabilize GDP and stimulate domestic demand, echoing the tone established by China's top decision-making body, the Politburo, during its meeting on December 6th. So let's start with the trading industry. Chinese exporters lose some of their edges from a weakening yuan. A country's exporters benefit from a falling currency because it makes things they sell internationally cheaper for customers paying in another, stronger currency. However, as China's recent UN decline demonstrates, this is only occasionally the case. So far this year, the onshore spot yuan has fallen by roughly 9% to below 7 per dollar, reaching 7.3200 per dollar in early November, its lowest level since December of 2007. The exchange rate volatility hasn't harmed order volume, said Wing Lei, who is executive vice president of Safewell Group Holdings Company LTD, a producer and exporter of safes and communication goods. China also suffers from corruption. China's former industry minister was expelled from the Communist Party. Xiao Xingqing, a former minister in charge of China's industrial and technological development, has been expelled from the Communist Party for bribery, according to the country's top corruption buster. Xiao, who served as Minister of Industry and Information Technology from 2020 to July this year, was accused of accepting banquet invitations that may have influenced the fair execution of his official duties and accepting a large amount of cash bribes, according to a statement issued by the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection on Monday. And what is happening to the Chinese property market? Well, according to a private survey released on December 25th, China's housing prices fell quicker in December, despite a series of support measures, suggesting persistently poor demand and growing COVID-19 cases. This summer, China's property market crisis deteriorated, with official statistics revealing that housing prices, sales, and investments have decreased in recent months, putting more strain on the country's struggling economy. And according to a survey conducted by China Index Academy, one of the country's leading independent real estate research businesses, home prices in 100 cities declined for the sixth consecutive month in December decreasing 0.08% from the previous month after losing 0.06% in November. According to the survey, 68 of the 100 cities saw a decrease in monthly pricing compared to 57 in November. And China policy support for property exceeds expectations, Vank Chief says. Even as the house sales collapse continues, the head of China's second largest property developer by sales said that he sees good indicators in the real estate business, with recent policy assistance likely to have a positive influence on the sector and ease builders' liquidity concerns. And now, let's talk about the fiscal deficit. As monetary policy has only a limited impact on boosting demand and growth, attention is increasingly turning to the role of the fiscal policy. The CEWC pledged to maintain a proactive fiscal policy in 2023 and said that it would be more forceful. Still, the readout suggests that there may be no significant stimulus and that rising local government debt remains a concern. The proactive fiscal policy should be more forceful and more effective with a better mix of tools, including fiscal deficits, special purpose bonds, and interest subsidies. According to the readout, while high-quality development should be effectively supported, fiscal sustainability must be ensured, and the local government debt risks should be controlled, the meeting noted. China has traditionally kept its fiscal deficit within 3% of GDP, a level long seen as a ceiling that should not be breached. But the ratio jumped to 3.6% in 2020 from 2.8% in 2019 as the government ramped up spending and investment to shore up the economic growth amid the COVID-19 pandemic. 
the ratio fell to 3.2% in 2021, and the target for 2022, set in March, was a return to that 2.8%, which involved a reduction of 200 billion yuan in the budget deficit. Overall, it's clear that the impact of SPB investment in 2022 was not good as expected, Feng said. That is because as China's economy enters a new phase of development, the need for investment in traditional infrastructure has become much smaller. She also said that adding that investment in new infrastructure centered around the digital economy and the green economy should be led not only by the government, but also by the private sector. To sum up everything, the country should work hard to increase people's incomes, especially for those hit hard by the pandemic, properly relax restrictions on house purchases and mortgage loans, and revive service consumption. So there you have it, guys. If you've enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to be the first to watch the following videos and for more finance news, guides, and updates. Thanks for watching.